Hello, on behalf of the Lower East Side Ecology Center, it is my pleasure to welcome you today to our annual summer picnic. This year, the Ecology Center is celebrating 30 years of community-based composting. My name is Christina Dutz Romero, and I'm a co-founder and executive director of the Ecology Center. This year, we have to offer a virtual event, and we thought we'll take advantage of that by showing you some action pictures of how we turn food scraps into compost, and we also will share some historic pictures. So settle in and enjoy the show. And now, live from the Firewood House in East River Park. This building is located at the foot of the Grand Street Plaza and headquarters our administrative offices and also houses our environmental education and stewardship programs. Stewardship for natural resources and public open space is at the heart of all programs the Ecology Center is offering. I would like to invite you now to join with Melinda Billings, our stewardship coordinator, to explore some of the native plants that make their home here in East River Park. Hi everyone, my name is Melinda and I'm the stewardship coordinator for the Lower East Side Ecology Center. First, let me give you some basic information about this park. This month we celebrate the 81st anniversary of the park. We at the Ecology Center have been stewards of this park since 1998. We are also celebrating 30 years of composting and we are using a lot of the mulch and compost from our own compost yard to provide nutrition to our native plants in East River Park. Come with me and let us take a nature walk through the East River Park. I want to highlight a few of the flowers that are in bloom this season. Swamp milkweed. The common name for these flowers is swamp milkweed, while their scientific name is Asclepias incarnata. One way to identify these flowers is by smell. They have a strong vanilla odor. Because of their smell, they attract many types of insects, including bees, wasps, ants, flies, butterflies, moths, and beetles. Monarch butterfly caterpillars also feed on this plant, even though they prefer the common milkweed. Beach plum. The common name for this shrub is the beach plum. It is a native plant of the Atlantic Northeast Coast. In May, these shrubs are covered in white flowers, and by late August, you start to see the berry plums ripen. The small fruit come in various colors, yellowish, reddish, and dark purplish blue when ripe. These plums are edible and can also be used in jellies and beverages. Thank you again for joining us on this beautiful day to visit the East River Park. This park has been a crucial green space during the lockdown, and experiencing the summer season here has truly been uplifting during these challenging times. As we celebrate our 30-year anniversary of community-based composting, I would like to share some of the milestones for this program. As some of you might know, we started recycling of metal, glass, and plastic in 1987 in front of the 6th Street and Avenue B Garden. This drop-off was so popular that soon we started to scout for an empty lot to accommodate the overflow of materials collected there. We found our future home on East 7th Street between Avenue B and C. And after we cleaned up the garbage in this uh, empty lot, we realized that we can really turn this lot into an attractive green space. However, we, lack, we lacked any budget to purchase some soil, and, but we had a passion for everything recycling. So we decided to make our own soil by inviting our constituency to bring us food scraps. This is how the composting program started in 1990. In the process, we created a green space on East 7th Street that contributes to the health of our community. As our garden crew, so did our compost program. We brought a food scrap drop-off uh, program to the Union Square Green Market in 1993. And to accommodate the ever-increasing amounts of materials we collected, we transitioned the compost program to East River Park in 1998. Our first location in East River Park was right next to the Fireboat House. 
Our partnership with Parks and Recreation also allowed us to turn leaf and yard waste that was generated by the Parks Department into compost. In 2006, we entered into a partnership with the Department of Sanitation and became the Manhattan branch of the New York City Compost Project, a citywide program that offers edu uh, compost education such as the Master Certificate course technical assistance to community gardens and free compost to public greening groups. This partnership also allowed us to increase the um, opportunities for people to drop off their food waste to 10 locations in Lower Manhattan. So now let's take a look what actually happens to your food waste once it travels here to East River Park and how we process it to turn it into black gold. Welcome to the East River Park Compost Yard. This site is a one acre compost facility located within this beautiful 57 acre park. In 1998, the Ecology Center brought its compost operation to the park. This site represents an amazing local model for how organic waste can be sustainably managed and benefit the local community. We collect food scraps from nearby residents and those materials travel only a few miles to be made into compost and the finished compost is then used within the park and nearby community gardens to rebuild the soils. Additionally, we welcome volunteers onto the site to learn about the composting process through hands-on activities and also teach workshops to the nearby community on all things compost related. So, the first step in our composting process starts with you. Our lovely participants who carefully save up food scraps each week and bring them to one of our drop-off sites throughout Lower Manhattan. We bring these scraps into our site to be transformed into compost. One of the most important steps in making compost is ensuring that our compost pile recipe has a balance of browns, which are our carbon-rich materials such as wood chips, sawdust, and leaves, and greens, which are nitrogen-rich materials or your food scraps. Here we mix roughly a 50-50 blend of food scraps with wood chips and wood shavings. This ensures that our piles stay aerobic or rich in oxygen and don't cause any odor issues for our fellow neighbors and park users. In building a compost pile, I like to think of it as creating habitat for our decomposer friends, bacteria, fungi, worms, micro and macro organisms. A compost pile is an ecologically rich environment. After our materials are mixed together, they are formed into windrows which are elongated piles that are roughly six to eight feet tall and 20 to 30 feet long. This is when things get exciting. The decomposers start to, well, decompose your food scraps, and in doing so, they generate a lot of heat. Our compost piles get to be about 160 degrees Fahrenheit at peak. These temperatures are sustained for multiple weeks until the majority of the materials have been decomposed. Once most of the materials are decomposed, the compost piles enter the curing phase. Here's where the worms and fungal networks start to populate the compost pile as the compost piles begin to cool. So now it's been about six months since your materials came onto the site and we're ready to distribute this beautiful compost to the community, but we have one final step in our process. We sift our compost to remove any contamination that might have snuck in. One of the most common culprits are fruit stickers and those produce twist ties you see. We also receive a lovely collection of silverware and kitchen utensils that sneak into a compost drop-off. So please remember to always double check that you are only dropping off things with us that actually decompose. We have to remove all those stickers and plastics by hand with the help of staff and volunteers. So now that we have sifted out any plastics, our compost is ready to be used in the park or donated to other community greening groups to build the soil in their communities. And there you have it. From plate to soil in our community, this is how we transform food scraps into nutrient-rich compost. And now, since you learned all about the art and science of turning food scraps into compost, we would like to turn to some of our favorite compost champions. My name is Lacey Tauber and I am a new board member of the Lower Society Ecology Center. 
My name is Ceci. I use they and them pronouns. I have the title of being the executive director at BK Rot. I'm uh, council member Antonio Reynoso. Uh, been a council member for about six years now. I'm uh, Keith Powers. I'm a city council member representing the east side of Manhattan. Uh, my name is Ron Gomen. I am the CEO of Closed Loop Partners. Closed Loop Partners is an advisory and investment firm focused on building the circular economy. I'm Bridget Anderson, Deputy Commissioner of Recycling and Sustainability at the New York City Department of Sanitation. My name is Sean Garcia. I'm a resident in the Lower East Side. I wanted to ask you, what is uh, community composting in, or in your opinion, what, what does it do? Yeah, so I consider community composting when we work together as a community to collect local food waste or organic waste and transform it into something that then can go back and feed the earth as well as our communities. And I guess when I envisioned it, it, it really is a community in this wider sense, even going beyond us as humans, but thinking about a lot of the microorganisms and other uh, decomposers that are involved in making this magical transformation happen. Well, first and foremost, what I would say is that community composting um, is exactly the indicator that we have for residents of New York City to understand that um, things that we throw away aren't always trash. And so uh, organic material that tends to end up in our trash cans is actually a resource that we should be using and we should be using um, you know, to help support the greening of our city. So um, I would say the first and most important thing is just a mindset about what we throw away and um, trying to you know, use it to its highest and best use when it's not actually trash. And I always talk about how the, cur the brown bin program, the, the curbside composting program stands on the shoulders of decades of effort by community composters to illustrate the value and the benefit of taking your food scraps and your yard waste and composting it. And that you're able to, unlike with, let's say, the recyclables, where it has to travel through many hands to many parts of the country and the world to become a new product, you're literally creating the new product, you know, right here locally. And so, um, I think I think community composting has played in a really important role in basically making the case that this is it's it's useful, it's beneficial, and it's viable and it's possible. You know, a lot of people are skeptical about you know space constraints in New York City and about what people are willing to do. Um, and yes, we have our fair share share of challenges related to rodent management, et cetera, but um, We've proven the case time and time again through the New York City Campus Project and community composting efforts. Well, first is uh, community-based composters deserve credit and recognition for being the foundation of the organics program in New York City. One of the things that enabled me to scale the program once I came into the administration is that you'd had all of these community composters like the... Uh, Lower East Side Ecology Center that had been in operation for many, many years and enabled thousands of New Yorkers to already participate in organic separation and composting. And so I, I wasn't in the position where I was looking for citizen number one to start doing organics. I was in the position where there were tens of thousands of citizens that had been participating for years, and I was able to use that momentum to uh, design and launch a much bigger program. So first is the community composters deserve a lot of credit for being the foundation of the organics program. Uh, second, I think that they are going to remain a really important long-term part of the solution because logistics are so complicated in New York City and so expensive that when you can have local processing of organics, whether it be through community compost facilities or small-scale anaerobic digestion, you reduce the cost of moving waste and organics around uh, and uh, the pollution of, of trucks on the street. Well, uh, I actually got into um, politics. Uh, one for reforming the Democratic Party after Barack Obama uh, is like my uh, somebody I looked up to and really thought I wanted to emulate, uh, but also because uh, my community is an environmental justice community. We handle about 40, we handled about 40% of the city's trash in one neighborhood. We have one of the highest asthma rates in all of the city, and we also have one of the least amount of park spaces in, in all of the city. Um, so I care deeply about what 
sanitation and the way we handle our trash looks like in the city of New York because it affects my community probably more than any other community in all of the city of New York. Uh, organics recycling is another opportunity for our community to see even more justice uh, and also to speak to justice for communities in which we're dumping this trash. Even though it doesn't happen in the city of New York, we are landfilling all of this garbage in other communities that tend to be uh, disconnected, disenfranchised, uh, poor, black and brown. So knowing that we could divert a significant amount of that trash and limit the amount of trash from moving to these other states and these other cities, um, while also assisting us here in the city of New York um, uh, economically by limiting how much money we need to spend on dumping that trash. Uh, but all that is important for me. It's, it's been uh, a fight that I've been a part of for, for more than a decade. So again, uh, for me, the organics recycling really speaks to a bigger picture of transforming the way we do trash in the city of New York that helps, uh, well, again, with equity in neighborhoods of color or, uh, or neighborhoods, specifically neighborhoods mm -hmm. that are uh, 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 environmental injustice communities or environmental justice communities. You know, there are so many different organizations in the city that are participating in this and in different places. And it's a, it's really like the front line for folks in communities to interact with their natural environment, maybe in ways that they haven't before, to learn about where our waste goes, which, you know, is something that people don't really think about very much. But you know, I, I love the quote, there's no such thing as a, as a way, as in to throw something away, it has to go somewhere. And when folks start to see compost, you know, in their neighborhood and folks that they know participating in it, uh, they start to think about where all of their waste goes and really begin to engage on these issues. And again, it's such a great opportunity for uh, local job creation, green jobs, um, youth education, um, and again, you know, helping keep waste out of our landfills, which is a really important thing for, um, you know, environmental reasons and environmental justice reasons. From an organizing perspective, as a community organizer, I saw composting as a really great accessible way for people to get involved in community gardens, to get involved in climate justice work. Um, and, and they could do it today because, you know, composting, you know, there are complex things about it, but a lot of, the, a lot of it is tied to intuition. And once you learn the basics, uh, you can really, really dig in deep and play with the worms. You together with council member powers have introduced some exciting legislation. And I would like for you to explain what the goals of the core act are. Well, the, the core act was uh, an emergency response to the, the defunding of the, uh, the compost uh, work that we've been doing here, uh, an organics program that we've been doing here in the city of New York for as a pilot for, for quite some time. Um, we understand the value of uh, recycling organics, uh, specifically because it accounts for about one third of our solid waste here in the city of New York. Um, we want to be smart about it. We want to be greener. We want to do a better job. We're related to sustainability and uh, mandatory organic recycling long term is the answer for that. But because of the crisis that we're in now, the financial crisis that we're in now, uh, we find ourselves having to be smarter or more creative about how exactly we're going to allow for people to handle their organics. Uh, Keith Powers and I got together. We thought about uh, allowing for a site in every single community board in the city of New York to be able to accept organics so that folks from their home can take it to, to these sites. In Williamsburg, for example, now that we've lost our curbside organics, I'm gonna be able to find the local site to be able to take this trash to. So CORE is a, in reaction to that. It's, a, it's a, a step in the direction of eventually getting to uh, mandatory organics recycling across the board, uh, but, we also know that the core act can be the beginning of just a smarter, more thoughtful, uh, progressive approach to how we handle trash. Yes, the core act is a bill that I introduced with Councilmember Antonio Reynoso, who chairs the committee on sanitation in the city council. And it's aimed at um, improving and expanding and upholding uh, our commitment to recycling and composting in the city. So
it's been about it's it's intended to be around equity so every neighborhood has the same access and also to do our 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 social good here which is to uh help save our earth and um and to compost and and and, and there's a component of it that also requires there to be recycling at those sites as well and right now particularly this year we went through um, uh, because of a fiscal crisis, a number of budget cuts across the board. We saved the community composting program in peace, but that we lost the curbside pickup program. So it's even more important now that we really uh, invest in uh, community composting and make sure people have some place to take it. Last but not least, I wanted to also find out what is your favorite organism in the compost pile? right now or lately i've just been really amazed by fungi um and i can't even tell you what exact fungi live in the bk rock compost <laughs> piles um but they are an organism that just leave me completely in awe and i think they're so giving they give back to our soils back to our land and have so much intelligence i don't even understand uh so i would say um i really polies it's really polies i love sow bugs and pill bugs something that a lot of people say was going to be the our red wigglers or worms it would be like an yeah. earthworm or something um, yeah, some something that I, I i love and and i'm happy to see uh you know thrives in compost from 100 percent ah the earthworm i have to admit that it's also one of my favorite organisms in the compost pile when i'm reflecting on the 30 year years of community composting it's interesting to see how composting was such you know, almost a dirty word in the 90s a fringe activity with not too many consequences and that, how that has really now changed and moved into the center stage of allowing us to reduce our carbon footprint and to reach our goal of zero waste to landfills it took us decades to build this model of urban ecology where we take a uh, where we take organic waste and turn it back into a natural resource and green the community in the process and we do so much more we affirm that people's choices matter we create local green jobs we inspire the next generation of environmental leaders we achieve environmental justice and waste equity and we are building community cohesion we are deeply rooted in the Lower East Side with these programs. However, we are looking at an uncertain future with the onset of the East Side Coastal Resiliency Project. We are slated to move to a location uptown. This location will be a temporary location and we would rather stay right here in this community and move to an underutilized parking lot just south of our current space in East River Park. After this video, you will see in the YouTube description a link to write a support letter to Mayor de Blasio and the Parks Commissioner to allow us to stay and utilize that space. Together, we can make the next 30 years of community-based composting a reality in the Lower East Side. We hope you will continue to support us and we'd like to thank you for all of your support.